The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, we may have life in his name. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and the insights of our hearts and our minds be pleasing to you, O God, you who are our rock and our salvation. As I prepared for today, especially by focusing on the gospel lesson, I wondered why the scholars who created the lectionary put last week's gospel, according to John, where Jesus appeared in the upper room to the disciples, but Thomas wasn't there, and this week's gospel, according to Luke, one right after the other. You know, they're so similar. Are there truths in each of them that we need to pay attention to, or is that fair repeating? Evidently so. Otherwise, uh, they would have chosen a different lesson for us today. Each of the four Gospel writers have different stories to tell about what happened after the crucifixion of Jesus. They each saw it from their own perspective. And that's why we have these different versions. But John and Luke both seem to think it very important to emphasize that Jesus insisted upon showing them his hands and feet, because both of them included this in their versions. Today, we're told that the disciples thought they were seeing a ghost. They were terrified. Well, who wouldn't be terrified? Jesus died, and the dead just don't come back to life. This must be a ghost they were seeing. In those ancient days, you could tell an apparition was a ghost because their feet did not touch the ground. They were kind of foggy. Uh, so when Jesus showed them his hands and his feet, his feet were touching the ground. This could not be a ghost. Not only that, he asked for something to eat. And ghosts just do not eat. If we read the passage before today's lesson, we would know that Jesus had just spent some time with two of his followers on the road to Emmaus. They didn't recognize Jesus. And as they walked along, the two shared with Jesus what had happened in Jerusalem and the story of the resurrection. Jesus spoke with them about what the scriptures had taught about the Messiah. 
and their hearts, their hearts burned within them as he spoke. So they urged him to stay with them, and as they sat at table, and he blessed the bread, it was then that they saw it was the resurrected Jesus. And once they saw who he was, Jesus vanished out of their sight. So what did that mean? So the two rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what had happened. And this is where our story for today, for this morning, picks up. So no wonder the disciples thought Jesus was the ghost. I mean, people just don't vanish if they're there like that. No wonder they were terrified. One of the main differences between the gospel that John related and today's gospel is that Jesus taught his disciples all that scripture said about the coming of the Messiah from Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets, the Hebrew scriptures. So they not only had a physical appearance of Jesus, but they had a scriptural basis on which to believe. And these are two very important points. You know, we blame poor Thomas because he didn't believe what the disciples told him about Jesus' appearance. But the rest of the disciples were just as doubtful. Surely this was a ghost. Jesus said, look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. It was only after Jesus showed them his hands in his feet and ate with them that they believed that this was really Jesus, much like us. And aren't we, aren't we just like those disciples, right? We need evidence that Jesus is alive and with us in order to believe. This is what our world needs, too. We need to experience Jesus with flesh and bones so that he is not just some great idea, some pie of the sky, uh, some great story about love, but love itself. And truly, this is why the church came into being, uh, to be the very presence of Christ in the world. Following the Lord and Savior, we are the ones who feed the hungry, who clothe the naked, who visit the sick and those in prison, for whatever their prison may be called, to stand with the oppressed, to heal the suffering, to give hope to the hopeless, just as Jesus did. You know, people catch the faith because they experience the love of Jesus through us. We are Christ's hands and feet. He is present in our flesh and bones. And people need a personal experience of Christ. But Jesus did more in Luke's story than just show that he was indeed a living being in the flesh. Because Jesus used scripture to uh, prove that he was who he said he was. And the disciples needed more than just the experience of the living Christ. They needed the scriptures too. Not only to fortify their belief, but in order to proclaim the good news of the Messiah. Years ago, uh, I taught a basic Bible study class. And a relatively new member of the church was in that class. And while he had called himself a Christian his whole life long, he didn't attend church until now as a middle-aged man. He came to the class curious as to what it meant to be a Christian. This congregation was a most loving congregation, welcoming him, embracing him where he was on his spiritual journey, so that he got an experience of the love of Jesus there in that church. And yet here he was, still searching, this time in my class. 
I cannot tell you what it was that we read from scripture that day about Jesus. But what I can tell you is that all of a sudden, the man lifted his head, his eyes filled with tears, and he exclaimed in a loud voice, I got it! I finally got it! He believed with all his being. Jesus was alive for him. The Apostle Luke said that Jesus did many signs in the presence of his disciples, which he did not write in this gospel account. He said, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. I love St. Francis and his very simple way of life. He once said, preach the gospel, use words if necessary. For that man in my class, it was necessary to use words. The words brought him life. He got it. He got it. When I was in undergraduate school, I took a class called Introduction to Religion. People of, of different faiths, or no faith, were in that class. And I befriended a conservative Jewish woman there, and we spent hours and hours discussing what we were learning. One day, we were in the library together. She was seated on one side of the side table, and I was sitting on the other side of the side table. And she leaned over and said, Arlene, I can't do it, no matter how hard I try. What can't you do? I asked her. I cannot keep all the 613 laws that I'm supposed to keep. <laughs> uh, just like you, I chuckled. I said, of course you can. God knows that. You're a human being, and you're not perfect. But I'm supposed to keep them. I said, do your best and know that God loves you even if you can't keep those 613 laws. Just read the scripture. Read the song. And I said, you've just heard the good news. And she sighed. And she smiled. My love for her was there. And so was the scripture that she knew so well. Perhaps one of the takeaways for this week is that some people get it just by experiencing the presence of Christ through us. Other people may need more before they get it. They need scripture as well. As Christian, as Christ witnesses, you know, scripture helps us as we go about proclaiming the good news of new life. New life that comes to us when we follow our Lord. So live the way of Jesus. Follow in his footsteps, loving people wherever they are on their journey, healing them, giving them hope, releasing them from what oppresses them, feeding them, clothing them, visiting them. Pass on to them the joy of new life that is in you. Know your scripture so that you may guide people through the stories about how God has acted throughout history, bringing hope and peace and justice and how God has captured all of that in the very life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Preach the gospel. Use words if necessary. Let us pray. Holy God, 
We pray that you make your presence known to us. Teach us. Equip us. Use us to fulfill your mission here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray.